Hari Om. We are in chapter 16. We began chapter 16 with the very words of Bhagwan in the first verse when he says, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Abhayam Sattva Samshuddhihi Jnana Yoga Vyavasthitihi Dhanam Damascha Yajyascha Swadhyayasya Tapah Arjavam Swadhyayasya Tapah Arjavam These are different qualities that Bhagwan wants us to cultivate. Why? Because we are involved too much in the gross world in through the gross senses and chasing the gross pleasures and uh, pursuits of the world. The subtlety of the mind uh, has to be achieved through a certain reorganization of our life. Let's put it that way. Um, how to reorganize this life and why is it necessary when we are all made of the same panchatattva and we are also um, uh, we are also uh, looked after and we are also host to the same Atma. The same Atma and Paramatma resides in all. We are an Ansh. What is the difference? Why? So, a simple example will suffice here. Why is it needed for us, many of us, to reorganize our life and attitude and perception? Let's look at this example of uh, a temple, a mosque, uh, a Gurudwara, a pub, a mall, um, a drinking house all these are made of the same material what is it that is needed they need stone and cement and steel and mortar and bricks so brick and mortar are the very uh, building blocks of all these structures and yet we will see that in the temple and the church and the mosque and the gurudwara as we enter the vibration is very different the vibration is different. Why is it so? So some of the Mahatma say that this is so, especially in, in the older ones, the very very old um, prayer houses. You will find that for centuries together, people who have entered the portals of these praying houses of mosques and gurudwaras and churches and temples, they have gone into these uh, prayer houses with a certain bhav. The Brahma Bhav, the Bhav of the ultimate uh, reality of God or Allah or Ishwar, it doesn't matter. That Brahma Bhav has been their Bhav, that attitude. The Deva Bhav, let's call it, you know, of the divinity. Um, hardly anybody has gone into a, a temple like this with Ghrina and Lobh and Ghamand, you know. <laughs> that would be uh, obviously not the case. So when they go in and many of them go in with the feeling of sarva bhuta hite rataha let me be helpful to others let me be of some use to humanity and with that kind of a surrender of the petty ego people enter maybe for a brief moment they may give up that uh, sansari pan that we have but even for that brief moment what happens is that brahma bhav that deva bhav that bhuta hite that hit karne ka bhav that remains. Why? Because scientists will tell us very, very um, clearly that every thought that we have uh, can be measured through instruments that the scientists have. How is it that they can measure thought when it is not a physical thing? Aha, uh -huh, you may think it's not a physical thing, but every thought which is uh, sparked in the mind uh, and the brain sparks a very small, tiny electrical impulse. Any scientist will tell us that. And that's the only way that they have these lie detectors, you know, they, they hook on the uh, some of the sensors to the fingers and to the brain and they can, they can make out if you're telling a lie. Um, in the same way, the waves of the brain can be detected and which part of the brain is being lighted up when we are meditating or when we are lying or when we are uh, feeling um, resentment or anger, or when we are in peace and we want to help, different parts of the brain is lighted up. And they are doing um, um, they, they are doing research and they are able to map this. So, so this part is taken care of. Every small tiny electrical impulse causes a certain vibration. And impulse is bound to form to um, uh, to give rise to a vibration. 
that's how our electrical appliances they uh, appliances they function how because these electrical impulses are powering something and causing a certain vibration and therefore the movement so every thought whether it's a dev thought or a lying thought or trying to take advantage of someone or the greed or the ghamand or the you, you know uh, that kind of lalach or lobh every thought even the thought of dev is a thought is a thought first i want to be uh, helpful to others because mm, i need to be uh, support them in some way is a thought every thought creates creates a vibration so when we go in with the brahma bhav dev bhav the divinity that vibration remains in the power in within the portals of those prayer halls that's why you feel a different vibration they made of the same brick and mortar as a pub as a pub or a club house or a bar or or a, or a mall uh, so so why the vibrations are different yeah and also because the people around us they are carrying the the same kind of vibrations with them in different places in the same way our body can be turned into a temple you've heard this phrase body temple how can it become a temple because the same vibrations of deva bhav of divinity can create the right vibrations and we will then emanate those vibrations and uh, be able to affect the quality of thinking and quality of thought of people around us this happens in the case of even um, angry or uh, people who are forever complaining uh, angry irritated uh, you will find that in their company also their vibrations to some extent begin to affect us therefore thought vibrations are vibrations and those vibrations we can turn it within to to make ourselves divine or uh, not divine let's call it for a simpler definition not divine and therefore chapter 16 is all about the two kinds of qualities we all carry asuri and daivi daivi the divine qualities and asuri the not so divine qualities we all have them but we also have a choice we have a choice to cultivate one or the other one mahatma used to give a very a strange example he said okay you have a white dog and a black dog and you keep feeding the black dog that black dog is going to become healthy and uh, and ferocious and huge because you are feeding it all the time what he meant was that our asuri that is the not so divine qualities and attributes that we all have if we keep feeding it or cultivating it or nurturing it that's what we will be at the end of the day and therefore we'll be further and further away from that brahma tattva that divinity that uh, ultimate consciousness that self we may call it the self because we are part of it and we become more and more distant from it and become totally confused materialistic and uh, lead a quite a fruitless life at the end of the day because all the materialism will go back to dust therefore bhagwan is urging arjun to say look if you want to uh, find the subtle truth which is me that is krishna then you have to cultivate certain qualities which will make you more subtle which will make your mind and body more body of course is a gross will make your mind more subtle how so he says abhayam tatva samshuddhi this is what we looked at abhayam do not carry fear of anything fear of course we carry fear of being uh, insulted and uh, and being lied about you know there may be people who misunderstand and lie about us and they have wrong opinions we are quite uh, afraid of opinions and of old age and sickness and death all these are our fears bhagwan says if you carry any fear with you you will remain in the gross world of fear uh, and mamata and rag that is attachment and therefore what is there to fear actually when um, when you realize that none of this is relevant to the atma to the real atma which is me none of these fears is quite relevant to it we can drop it and therefore get rid of your fears knowing the highest truth that is the injunction to arjun tatva samshuddhi he is the second word here which we saw briefly um the purity of our heart of course is always contaminated by three things mal all the reactions that we carry to the into the world of envy jealousy lobh lalach uh, and greed and ghamand and krodh 
that is all mal it is the impurity and weak shape rest, restlessness and avarant not knowing our true nature lost completely rudderless so these three things avarant not knowing our true self and weak shape useless restlessness in the world and mal the all the reactions mal weak shape and avarant is your ashuddhi is the is what is contaminating you once you know it will you not see it out will you not filter it out will you not try to get rid of it if i can see that there is something that's fallen into my porridge for example i am going to eat it i am not going to consume it until i purify it clean it or filter it out it's as simple as that that is when we see it as our shuddhi if we don't see it as a shuddhi we say ha sabhi to aise hain that how as the world is to hum bhi waise hain to fir theek hai fir millions and millions of lives ahead for us that the journey just gets longer that's all if we don't stop to listen to the um, scriptures or to krishna okay just like a child a child when he matures spiritually uh, <laughs> not spiritually when he matures uh, mentally psychologically he drops his plastic toys and a person um, a normal person who matures spiritually and learns to know the serenity of um, or of the highest truth will never go back to the restless world and will drop it easily in fact uh, chinnanand ji was asked by a youngster this is a real incident and he asked him but the youngster asked him uh, chinnya ji how is it that you are able to give up so many things um, you don't want to uh, deal with money you know personally you don't want to deal with money of course the money has to come into the ashram so that you can Uh, pay for the, the the scriptures and the swamis to be taught. Not the running of the ashram, but you yourself don't handle money, and uh, you don't need different kinds of clothes. And how is it you are able to give up so many things? Uh, so Chinmaya ji simply said, "Young man, have I ever asked you how is it that you are able to throw out the chewing gum, spit it out when you have had enough of it? Because when you find that the gum that you have been chewing has no more sweetness left in it you already without uh, realizing you want to spit it out so he said chinmaya ji said in the same way i have realized that uh, this the quality of everything around us is nashwar it's sort of perishable it doesn't hold any attraction for me so the, all the situations and relationships and people and and wealth and material things and decorations and entertainment he said i can actually see that they are without essence they are essence less so just as your chewing gum becomes essence less the sweet essence is gone you spit it out i also give up things in the world so chinmay ji said actually it's not as difficult to understand and therefore he says if you want some should be he realize the nashwarta of everything you are clinging on to then in the second line he says you want to to purify that purity is what i'm waiting for so that i as krishna can grasp you and hold you in my arms uh, danam namaste yagyascha dan of course is charity um, very briefly annadan and all the material dan that we do good very good but vidya dan is considered higher and abhay dan is considered the highest abhay dan meaning getting somebody someone out of their fear doing something to make them fearless because people may fall into fearful situations uh, financially or uh, socially uh, psychologically sometimes uh, people have mental problems um, whatever professionally they may go into a fearful problem if you can help within your capacity get them out of that fearful situation you're giving them a greatest gift of abhay dan it's considered the highest in the scripture the gift and also if we give people the highest knowledge that hey look you are immortal but you are just making a very small mistake of thinking that because i am immortal my body also must be immortal that's a small mistake you are making so then the my the people realize oh then it's okay to give up the body i have no fear of that and getting them out of that fear is the highest abhay dan to the and how does that abhay this abhay dan come to gyan only when we have the highest gyan so he says dan danam is very important for us so there is this 
story of Tilmiyaji and this was again a real incident. He had gone for uh, uh, on an invite. Uh, they call it Bhiksha when they feed the Swami. After the Bhiksha, he found that the lady of the house, who had been so very attentive to the Swami, she began uh, to write something in a small diary. And uh, Tilmiyaji thought that perhaps she is making notes about some spiritual insight uh, that she may have gained in our company. So he asked her gently, uh, what is it that you are writing in your diary? And she said, oh, I'm just writing down the uh, list of things that I have been spending money on this week. So Chinmayaji was a little disappointed and he said, in the August company of Swami is in such a high spiritual energy in the room and she goes and writes her account. So he was a bit disappointed and then he added, he said, once I make the account, I uh, pour out all the things that I have spent on which have been only on myself for my own fancy. Apne opar kharch kiya hua, fizul kharchi, because of my whim to, to enjoy something. Whatever fizul kharchi I have done, I uh, again I list out those things and total it up and that is the amount that I decide to donate that week or that month. Which means what? This lady wanted to practice dance but she didn't know how. And this is a real incident where she said that whatever uh, useless things I'm spending on, I don't really need so many things. None of us need so many things but we keep buying because of the fancy. They, we, uh, these things take our fancy. He said, this is happy. I'm going to list it out and an equal amount goes for dance to some charity. And that's how she disciplined her mind. Because once you know that it's all, now I have to accumulate money for dana, you are not going to spend so much on yourself. That is one way of creating dham. Dhamma, the second word, dhammascha. Dham means control over senses. And our control over senses becomes extremely uh, difficult when we are attracted by so many things and people and relationships and situations and experiences. We may be experienced karna hai, wo bhi experience karna hai, a new flavor, a new fragrance, a new relationship, a new visit, a new travel destination, everything. Humko experience karna hai to gratify my senses. So, us mein hota kya hai? The human vitality is dissipated because that once that experience is gone, it's gone, it's not going to remain with us and the vitality is also gone. So all this extra energy that we have, we can divert or channelize into a higher person. Therefore, Dhamma, Dhamma has been given a very high status in the city. In fact, they say that uh, those who qualify for the highest learning, Sakrachari used to say even for learning the highest, even for listening to the scriptures, I need Shama, Dhamma, Uparati, Sitiksha and Mahukshatwa. That means I need people who are, uh, have control over their mind and control Dhamma over their senses and those who have fortitude and Sitiksha and forbearance and tolerance and Mahukshatwa, desire for ultimate liberation, that thirst for liberation, Moksha. So, Shankaracharya's um, admission test is very high for us. <laughs> we would probably not qualify if we were to uh, take admission in Shankaracharya's Vedantic University today. We wouldn't qualify, we would be rejected at the entrance test at all, uh, at once. Shama, Dhamma, Uparati, Pitiksha and Shama, Dan and uh, on top of that, Mubukshutva, Mokshki, Vyas. Never mind. But Krishna is not so harsh. <laughs> Krishna is a very, very loving, very, very compassionate teacher. Shankaracharya was also a teacher, but, uh, but very strict. So, Bhagwan is saying, no, if you can cultivate Dhamma, it will help for, for you to put your effort in the right direction. So, next is Yagya. Yagya is when we put our effort not into only our own Ichha Purti, I have so many desires and in order to fulfill those desires, I am expending all my energy. That is not Yagya. Yagya is when there is selflessness in any effort. That sacrifice and selflessness is Yagya. Now, Yagya of course also has other connotations like having a havan and a puja or a sacrifice. 
I'm not going into that because that's the karma kant definition. This is the gyan kant definition. Logically, if you see, is it possible for us to even do selfless service as a yagya if we do not have dhamma, which comes before this control over senses? And if we don't have a desire and the ability to do dana, that is charity. So they are all logically connected. I think. And therefore we don't have to think which one should I cultivate. No, they are all so logically connected. And the next one is Swadhyaya Tapa. Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya of course is self-study. Now when we reduce our indulgences in the world, um, then we have more and more energy left over. What do we do with that leftover energy? We are not going to look for new distractions, new engagement, ab kya kare, ab koi naya guru bana dehe ya, some, we don't need a new start-up, start-up in our life, but when you say, Swadhyay is a good way to, to spend that extra energy. Now, Tapa is another word used here, Tapa. Tapa actually means austerity, but doesn't mean that we start uh, living a frugal life and uh, lead a simple life. Uh, and without having high thinking. Uh, that would just be a simplistic uh, definition. Tapa is austerity when we are able to bear normal inconveniences of life and difficulties and uh, obstacles in life. Normal ones. They will come in our life. Yes. So there will be weather which is, is not conducive to us. There will be people who uh, may not necessarily be in tune with what we are thinking, it's not, it's not even expected of them, it's not fair to expect them all to be aligned to our way of thinking or to have the ideas we have and therefore we react, no. In all these difficult circumstances, people and situations which go out of hand and uh, circumstances which are out of control and they will because there is another law operating behind it which we refuse to accept and that non-acceptance is causing us resistance. मैं रिजिस्ट करूंगा मुझे ये करना है यस आप सही कर सकते हैं पुट इन आर एफर्ट यज्ञ विद द सेल्फलेस स्पिरिट पुट इन योर यज्ञ लीव द रिजल्ट एंड दैट टफ ऑफ बीइंग एबल टू बेयर द नॉर्मल डिफिकल्टीज ऑफ प्यास एंड भूख एंड गर्मी एंड सर्दी एंड वर्षा एंड यू नो दिस टू मच रेन और टू मच हीट और टू मच सन एंड ऑल दैट एबिलिटी टू उसको सहन करने की शक्ति होती है ना नॉर्मली वो उसको हम टप कहते हैं इसीलिए वेन यू सी मदर्स इन देर होम दे विल पुट अप विथ हंगर विद इन पुट अप इफ देर लेस ऑफ अर डेजर्ट दे विल डिस्ट्रीब्यूट द डेजर्ट एंड नॉट हैव इट इफ देर इज इफ देर लेस मनी फॉर गिफ्ट दे विल से ओके आई डोंट नीड अ गिफ्ट दिस वे दिस दिवाली यू कैन हैव गिफ्ट you know, for the, the children or the family. They give up things so easily. It doesn't matter to them. That is their tapa. But it is not a tapa with effort. It is effortless. Why? Why is it so? And you will find the same thing. It's not only mothers um, and parents who are capable of this. You will find that if you have made a trip to any of the pilgrimages, to, to Mecca or Medina or to Kedar or Badri or um, Vaishnav Devi, you will find that on that trip, there were lots of hardships. None of these, they are all up on a hill and distant places and um, they are very difficult to make these trips and things may go wrong and your hotel bookings have gone wrong and one morning there is no hot water in the geyser and you are in Badrinath and you are freezing. It, all that has happened to all of us and we have been through it. <laughs> Why do we put it up, put up with it? Because at that time we are so cheerful. We have only one and one thought, I want to be one with that deity at Kedarnath. I want to be one with that deity at Kedarnath. I want to be one My energy and my focus is that upasana. And if that is my upasana, I put up with so much. And, uh, and there have been also accidents and there so many mishaps happening. So, in the same way that we have the capacity for tap, only thing is that we don't exercise that tap uh, in our normal life. Why? Because whenever we have a higher ideal, we can be tapasvi. We easily put up with a lot of tolerance of difficulty. In our normal life, we slip into complaining and cribbing and 
saying that things are not right. Right for who? They may be right for someone else. Why? Because we are completely self-occupied and self-centered. कि ये situation मेरे मुताबिक मेरे अनुकूल होना चाहिए. Only then I will say that this situation is right. अरे हम कौन होते हो उसको? होते हैं उसको right या wrong की उपाधि देने वाले. I mean, not following our laws anyway. And but the difficulty that is arising is that with that complaining and giving and non-acceptance and non-tolerance, non-tougher. We are actually creating a mental climate for ourselves, which is not conducive for the harm, because then we are bogged down by. So the harm done is to our own swabhav, and therefore, Bhagwan says, tapa is very important. When will you have tap? When you have a higher ideal in front of you, simple. Ah, so in our normal life, why don't we say, "Arey, chalo, chodo, ab tire flat ho gaya." Okay, I'll do. I'll fix it, of course, but I'm not going to rave and rant about it. Uh, and just when I need it to get to the airport, and there's a flat tire, or uh, okay, so I, I just call an Ola and just get on with it. There are other options in life, but to rave and rant and crib and with my nature, my swabhav, or which is becoming addicted to complaining, and people listening to it and giving a willing ear are adding to your addiction. The harm done is irreversible. It's not irreversible. Sorry, it can be reversed, but it is deep, deep enough for us to fritter away the human potential, potential of one human life. Because our potential is not just limited to the sansari things, and to try and making them all the sansari situations conducive to us. Where it anukul hona chahiye, and all our effort is then directed towards. मेरी इच्छा पूर्ति वो डिफरेंस डेस इट मेक्स डी आत्मा वहाँ से ओके गो ऑन डेस नॉट डेस डेस क्वाइट अ फूलिश वे टू लिव ही इमेजिन एंड आर जब हम इस डी लास्ट क्वालिटी इन दिस वर्स नॉट इन दिस चैप्टर इन दिस वर्स आर जब हम आर जब हम सेस एंड यू नो वेरी वेल डी वर्ड डी नेम अर्जुन कम्स फ्रॉम � so how to settle that? That doesn't mean that you're a fool and people can treat you like a doormat and walk all over you. No, you can protect yourself. But in dealing with other people, you do not keep um, your motives and your actions and your words different. What's on my mind is on my lips, is my intention. It's the same. What I intend uh, and what I speak it has to be the same. Usko saral ta kaise? Not cleverness. So I'm, I'm, I may want to be clever in this world, and then um, yeah, people say, "Ki arey nahi, ham to business kar rahe hain." Jante hain aap? Agar aap aise saral honge, aur jo aap apne man mein rakhe hain, aur wahi bol denge, to business to nahi ho payega. There are many people who believe. But uh, Bhagwan says that he has put a very high premium on sat. Okay, so I will earn a few, uh, few thousand dollars less, a few thousand. Rupees less, but मेरा सच्चे से कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं करना is my higher gain in terms of my human life. It's a much higher gain. तो ठीक है, इस बार मुनाफा नहीं हुआ, because 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 I did not indulge in hiding some truth about my business in order to get my business going or whatever. So there is no there are no two truths. I mean you cannot have a truth one for the temple. One for the home, one for the business. Truth is truth. It cannot be two. So it's like saying uh, that I uh, coming late. Four people who came late for the meeting, and uh, the boss said, "Oh, uh, you have to explain what happened." So the leader said, "We had a flat tire," and uh, so the boss was very clever. He asked the first person, "Which tire was flat?" Uh, and uh, he asked him in seclusion, not in the presence of others. Later on, he asked him in the tea break. So the first person said, "Oh, the right front." He asked the other person quietly at tea break. The other person said, "Oh, flat tire. It was the left front." And the third person said, "Back and all that." How can truth have so many faces? And then he knew that this was not the truth. So in order to live in this world, we try to. Be clever. Bhagwan says it doesn't help. 
it's only going to destroy your swabhav of telling the truth because uh, we are coming to that satyam ahimsa and brahmacharya are the three solid solid pillars of sanatan dharma you cannot compromise with them so, and the smallest compromise you say bas it's a white line bas yehi to bol diya na humne ki hum hum bas pahunch gaye hain when i haven't even left my house there are many people who give this example because it's that uh, maybe because it's the oft quoted lie but that is still a compromise and it gives us the habit of getting away with a lie but um, our swabhava cannot be um, be untouched by it unsullied by it unmuddied by it so so remember even if cannot compromise with this but we are coming to such thing so our jawab is having no manipulation of people why do you want to manipulate them let them be who they are and no need for crookedness and therefore therefore such people gain sage sage meaning the glow there is a glow on such people who never tell a lie who never want to have any desire even to hurt other people or to uh, be one up on them ki main unse better hu and no comparison they are simple people they have a glow they have a shanti around them um, and that is called the sage so in conclusion what is what is being said here it is being said that there are divine possibilities that we all have why are we not taking the possibilities seriously and uh, if there are too many like danam um, that is charity and tamascha self control yagyascha selfless service and uh, swadhyaya time for our own studies and arjavam um, saralta simplicity there are too many then bhagwan says look you don't even have to think how to transform it he says just detect the opposite in you so the opposite of dan will be selfishness ah do i see selfishness in me i'm not willing to share this or that or give away some portion of my wealth when the, the world is in distress as in corona time or to share with the people who have served me or to support them those who have served me before corona time so there have been many people who have not supported their helpers during corona time it is their swabhav not that they cannot spare a few thousand rupees that swabhav leads them uh, downward towards asuri asuri prakriti non divine so he says when you see selfishness detect it and then uh, try and get rid of it damascha when you see self indulgence i want this i fancy that when you see too much of your craving of i want detect it when you see the opposite happening the uh, it will drop because you are observing it and the right the daily progressive will keep on so when the growth all these growth things you know self indulgence and selfishness and uh, and manipulation of others or telling lies large or small these are growth when they are dropped the subtle automatically emerges that's what he's trying to say it's like saying i want to see the sunlight okay that when the clouds are moved the sun will shine anyway because the, the sun has been there all along so there's a story of uh, uh, a novice monk who had gone to a master to to gain knowledge and the master said okay for this first year i'm giving you a task and you have to do this task for a whole year and what was the task the task was that um, there was this basket you know woven out of uh, bamboo and um, bamboo and reed this basket the master said you have to go down uh, to the river and come up to the ashram every day and uh, fill it with water and bring the water up to the ashram go down to the ganga bring it up and uh, the disciples said bas but nahi kar raha hai wah that was so when he started the task what happened he found that that basket had been used before this for keeping coal in the you know for heating the food etc for the ashram and there were and uh, and in the bottom was completely soot soot laden laden with soot black 
और ही सेड ओके मैं पानी ले आता हूँ आप मास्टर ने कहा तो मैं ले आता हूँ द फर्स्ट डे ही वेंट डाउन टू द रिवर एंड ही फिल्ड द बास्केट विद वाटर एंड ही केम अप टू द आश्रम गैस वॉट हैपन I know you're thinking about the uh, color of the water, but actually there was no water at all because it had um, filtered through the reed and bamboo. It was a bamboo basket. The master said, uh, "No problem, do it again. I'm sure you can do it." And and the disciple uh, kept doing it, believing that the master was leading him uh, on the right path. And uh, and he continued to do it and fill water and come up with an empty basket, go down to the river again. Until he was exhausted, and he said, "Master, I cannot do this anymore. Where is this leading? This is leading anywhere." And the master said, "Would you care to glance down at the bottom of the basket?" And uh, the, the disciple did, and he said, uh, "Yes. What do you see? The coal mark, the suit had been completely cleansed. So when we keep listening, had been cleansed. Now it was a sparkly." Uh, white uh, or whatever bamboo colored basket so what was the moral of the story moral of the story is that we keep listening to the scriptures and we come back home and we are in sansar because the habit of sansar is mill millennia old millennia old the habit of being involved in sansar how can it be broken and changed with one reading of the scriptures or a few hours of contemplation or some dhyan or manan or meditation no not possible it will seep through because the basket is very jini hum chadariya jini kabir's favorite uh, analogy jini re chadariya um so we are carrying such a porous basket with us and therefore the knowledge is going to uh, wash through it and and then we say oh mujhe to kuch nahi yaad aaya bhagwan ne kya kaha tha meri life ko kaafi change ki hai koi ab hum kya kare and then we are a distraught and distressed like this disciple and then the master says hey look with all that effort you put in at least one thing happens maybe you are not holding the knowledge and uh, the that water in the basket or the knowledge in your mind but the basket has got cleansed in kuch purity of mind so i can तो हमको अपना काम क्रोध और उसमें याद तो आता है ना कि अरे मुझे सचमिश नहीं होना है किसी का कुछ भला कर दे और घमंड किस बात का घमंड इस बॉडी इज नशवर इतनी चीजें तो याद आने लगी है दैट इज द प्योरिटी ऑफ प्योरिफाई तो पहले कर लो उसके बाद बात फिर पानी करना तो नेवर नेवर ज्ञान तो एक हमको आया नहीं पहले पहले जीवन में in the this lifetime only the basket will get cleansed of the mal the mal that we have collected for century in different lifetimes so uh, so, so this uh, verse talks about that shuddhi but bhagwan says wait there are other things you have to do in order to reorganize your life so in verse number 2 he says why don't you cultivate some more things in you be careful he says if you are watchful you can which one ahimsa satyam akrodhah tyagrashantir paishunam daya bhuteshvalo luptvam madvam hriracha hriracha palam ahimsa uh, ahimsa of course it means non violence but you know the three pillars of sanatan dharma are uh, ahimsa uh, satyam and brahmacharya now these are the things that if we indulge in that ahimsa and asatya and uh, over indulgence in our senses life becomes a very toxic mix you know very toxic poisoning our life and the lives of others around us and leading us to no real liberation and solace or moksha or closeness to god or closeness to our true self none of this is our toxicity becomes mixed in our lives now um ahimsa it means we say oh of course i never harm or even slap or even shout or yes we are uh, not hinsak people because we are uh, living a civilized life but we want to be careful even if there is a thought if there are people who have harmed you and who have uh, you may try to correct the wrong by telling them ki ha bhai ye theek kar dijiye please and uh, or those who have wished you ill 
यू नो देर आर पीपल हु विश यू हिल बिकॉज ए एन बी एस और जेलस वट एवर लाइक दुर्योधन वो दुर्योधन के डिजीज है हमारी डिजीज नहीं है तो वो दुर्योधन के डिजीज की वजह से हम क्या दुर्योधन के लिए अशुभ चाहेंगे कि यस आई विश दैट ही डाइज एंड ऑल इज ब्रदर्स डाइज द बैट अर्जुन हैज नो सच हॉस बिकॉज अर्जुन इज फाइटिंग अ बैटल फॉर धर्म नॉट फॉर टेकिंग रिवेंज ऑन दुर्योधन सो इन आर लाइफ एंड पीपल हु आर डूइंग अर रॉन्ग वी डोंट हैव टू गेट इन टू द दुर्योधन डिजीज एंड विश दैम इन इन टर्न विच ऑफकोर्स शकुनी मामा दैट ईवल ही हैव दिस डिजायर दैट मैं एक दिन कौरव और पांडव दोनों के पूरी खानदान में डाके रहूंगा दिस वॉज हिज साजिश दिस वॉज हिज कंस्पिरेसी एनी वे दैट द लॉन्ग स्टोरी बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम शकुनी ऑल द वन ऑफ द पार्ट ऑफ साइड देर नॉट ऑपरेटिंग फ्रॉम हिंसा येस दिस इज अ बैटल फील्ड येस दे हैव टू ड्रॉ ब्लड बट इट्स नॉट हिंसा Why? Because then on our borders there would be millions. There are millions of people protecting our borders. Would we say that they are all insects? No. It is when we have that desire that I want to destroy somebody or wish him ill, and I hope is and I hope he really suffers. No soldier on the uh, on the front really wishes that the guy whom he has to kill, he has to be out of duty. Is um, he never wishes that I hope he suffers? Suffering is not in his mind. Just says, I hope he gets out of my way. I need to protect my land. That is Arjun's mind. So, when we wish ill and we wish suffering for others, that's in us, and that's in our mind. It may not even express itself because outwardly we are, uh, outwardly we have, we carry a veneer, veneer of polish and sophistication. We may do that, but <laughs> but Bhagwan and Karma cannot be fooled. So. What's the thought? And when else does uh, hinsa come in our mind? When we compare, uh, compare things. उनके पास इतना धन, उनके पास ये, वो फला. And then there is an insistence in my life that मुझे वो चाहिए जो इनके पास है. That insistence, that uh, aggressiveness that comes is a form of violence. It's the seed form of violence. Because then. When there is an insistence in my life कि मुझे वो चाहिए जो दूसरे के पास है that competitiveness will bring aggression and lies and one-upmanship which we see in the corporate world and all that is due to the violence of my own इच्छा. वो इच्छा में मुझे इतनी violently जकड़ लेती है that I become violent in my actions. But in a very nice, sophisticated, uh, within the protocol kind of way कि हाँ भाई मैंने बहुत से रिपोर्ट मैंने अपने कॉलेज की रिपोर्ट छुपा दी और मैंने अपनी दिखा दी बस इतना ही तो किया था बस इतना ही नहीं है देर आर कॉन्सिक्वेंस देर आर कॉन्सिक्वेंस टू दिस एक्शन विच वी विल देर नॉट टूडे आई मे गेट अ प्रमोशन टूडे एंड से हाँ सी आई टू कर्मा कर्मा विल कम बैक इन हैबिट टर्न इन सम लाइफ ऑन दी अदर यू कैन नॉट एस्केट इट्स वायलेंस टू बी हाईली कम्पेटिव वेन देर इज अ शॉर्टेज ऑफ समथिंग एंड वी से ये चीजें मेरे लिए हो जाए मेरे परिवार को मिल जाए बस एंड वी विश इट ओनली फॉर आर सेल्फ इट इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ वायर बिकॉज फॉर दैट वी आर विलिंग टू डू एनी सी हाउ सटल द हिंसक थॉट इज एंड इफ वी डोंट डिटेक्ट इट एंड वी जस्ट लुक एट द ग्रोथ फॉर्म ऑफ इट एंड सेन एन एज एन अप्लाई टू मी वी मे बी मिसिंग द पॉइंट एंड देन वी से ये सुख ये पदार्थ ये ऑब्जेक्ट ये बस मुझे ही मिल जाए वो मुझ में क्या क्रिएट करता है इन सेंसिटिविटी टू माई नेबर हु वॉन्ट टू सेम सेम पदार्थ सेम ऑब्जेक्ट आई डोंट आई शेयर और गिव इट अप सबसे बड़ा तब तो वो होता है कि आई गिव इट अप कि भाई अच्छा उनको चाहिए था उनके घर में बच्चे हैं एंड सोसाइटी हैड ओनली अ लिमिटेड नंबर ऑफ वट एवर इज बी रोल्ड आउट एंड दे दिया तब तो वही होता है एंड आई तब एंड हिंसा कैन नॉट गो टू दिया तो Uh, that's why bhagwan says i mean ta if you can cultivate arjun and remember arjun is standing in the midst of the battle field and he is got his chariot and his gandhi with the bow and arrow and the and he is the best the most supreme archer in the land and he is telling arjun ahimsa so a person who is not uh, familiar with the vedantic philosophy will say this is just a contradiction telling a soldier ahimsa say, no that's not so Which there's a philosophy behind it, which we are trying to understand. The second word is 
satyam. Whenever we tell a lie, our own personality becomes fearful. So we satyam kabhi bahar na aajaye, iska fear rehta hai. And then the personality becomes petty. A lying, petty, untrustworthy personality. And sooner or later, people come to know, hey, so Aram se dhoot bol rahe hai. So, trust bhi chala jata hai. We we make a, we cut a very, very sorry figure, even if we tell the smallest possible lie. At the most, what will happen when you tell the truth? People will say, ah, you did not think about uh, uh, me. I'm sorry. You have to apologize and say, yes, sorry, it slipped my mind. When you try to cover it up, you become untrustworthy, petty and undivine. <laughs> Asuri, in the words of Krishna, lying, there's a very, very high premium on it. Because uh, that can lead us down to the, the, our whole energy downwards. Okay, Akrodhaha. Akrodhaha doesn't only mean uh, not, not feeling anger. But at the time that anger arises, can we be so vigilant and alert as to check it and say, Oh, I can feel anger rising. And by when I say rising, it's not only in the mind. When you're really angry, you will notice there is a certain the pulse uh, of course it quickens and uh, the blood pressure rises. And sometimes when you're very, very angry, you even tremble. The body also feels the change, so naturally the mind will change, will feel the change. When we see it arising, why can't we just look at it and be able to check it at that time? Because the provocations in the world will be many, many, many more. And then for each provocation you are going to take a life water and say I am going to swat this and swat that and handle this and handle that, our energy is dissipated and in the end I am just a miserable, complaining, grumpy, grouchy and, and a very bitter kind of a person and that bitterness actually gets imprinted on the visage, on the face, on the personality, on the expression the person carries on the face. It gets imprinted. And that imprint is not only on the physical body, you know, it is also the imprint is carried to the next life. You know that very well. It's like at the time of death, they say um, you will be who you have been most of your life. Naturally, you can't transform in a moment. So if I have been just a complaining person and one person thinks of his guru at the deathbed, another person thinks about his cash box and says, why isn't anybody at the cash counter? All my sons are here. Shop me corn hai. Both are dying, but at the time of death, it's like a camera taking one last click. And that image, that impression will be carried forward. The last picture will be carried forward. The last picture will be carried forward. We know that. The provocations are so many. Why imprint all the krodha on ourselves? We have to remind you that the krodha is on ourselves. Imprint ho raha hai. It is showing on us. So the um, mechanically responding to everything makes no sense. The next word is tyag. Are we capable of tyag? Um, tyag meaning what? What is the definition here? To be able to give up our desire and craving and hankering. That is the ultimate tyag. Not the tyag of, I have given five saris, I have given some money and some money I have given. No, that is just dan. That is just a small thing, it's just dan. Tyag is a higher thing to say that, we have kept it because I see no point in it. It's so pointless at the end of the journey. That is the highest tyag. When can this tyag come? When naturally, logically, when I have I am without himsa, without competitiveness, without comparing Duryodhan said that oh, ki inke in the trust mein kaise itne log migrate kar rahe hai and their city is now looked after so well, it's a gleaming beautiful city uh, in the trust mujhe bhi waise hi karna hai, my Hastinapur whatever, so that comparison when it's gone, himsa is gone when crowd is gone only then is this 
going of ichha possible, this tyag possible. Remember there is a link, they are not, they are all interconnected. So, so cultivating one or the other, any one of these will lead to the rest. And therefore we can say that at the end of it Krishna is promising and saying Shantira Paishanam that all this tyag and tapa which I am asking for and dan and these qualities, subtler qualities in you, satyam, akrodham and ahinsa, finally it's for you Arjun, it's going to lead you to the highest shanti and who doesn't want shanti, highest shanti and in fact he had mentioned this in the 12th chapter, he had said tyaga shantira nantaram tyag karne se shanti ananta milti hai. 12th chapter no, unko remind kiya tha Arjun ko. Tyaga chantira nantaram shanti is your, is one of the qualities you can cultivate through these actions. So although shanti is mentioned as another quality, it is logically an outcome of all the other transformations that we may want to do in our mental makeup. So shanti is the one on the, and upaishanam, apaishanam. Apaishanam, very important, last word in the first line. Keeping an unmalicious tongue. Unmalicious tongue? Yes. A tongue which is incapable of gossip, of slander, of malice, of malicious talk, of tale, carrying tales and gossip and carrying stories and carrying uh, complaints. Inki chugli unse, unki chugli inse. In this way the sadhak, the sadhak can never focus on the highest because by keeping an unmalicious tongue we are harming ourselves and others. Gossip is something we easily slip into because there is so much of it around and it's there in every serial, in every piece of literature that we need, it's everywhere. It's in my neighborhood and then sometimes it's in my mind and I want to blurt it out to someone. So when we listen to gossip, we are equally guilty. We can excuse ourselves gently and say, oh, I forgot. There's something on the gas cooker. <laughs> Will you excuse me? Um, if it's a very, very close friend and very desirous, we say, hey, look, can we keep away from gossip? It's going to harm us. Because you want unka bhi bhala chate, apna bhi bhala chate. We have to stay away from slander and malice. And imagine Krishna at that highest level of cosmic truth coming down and telling us this very, very common uh, practice that we should not indulge in. See the extent and the minuteness, the, the detailing into which Krishna has taken the trouble to go. No other scripture in the Sanatan Dharma, in the Vedic literature, in the Vedic tradition, no other literature goes to this detail. They will tell the highest truth and then they will give some logical explanations to, to give that highest gyan. But how to lead a, uh, a life which is subtler, how to lead a life which leads us closer to Krishna, only the Bhagavad Gita has got the detail. Krishna's uh, humility to come down to that level and say, hey, even gossip is going to harm you. Hinsa, competitiveness, comparison is going to harm you. And at the same time, Krishna has not uh, given this highest knowledge to Duryodhan. Why? If Krishna has the highest knowledge, he should not do all of them, isn't it? But then, Krishna has also said in the 18th chapter, this knowledge is meant only for those who deserve it. Those who do not ask for it, Arjun, don't open your mouth. Those who ask for it, you know that they are ready for it. Duryodhan ke paas Krishna swayam gaye se. You know that very well. And Duryodhan says, I don't want the knowledge, I want war. Why? Because at the end of the war, I want the kingdom and I want prestige and I want power. It was dominating his mind. So in this world, when we live in a way where power, prestige, naam, uh, samman or dhan, dhan ki prapti, or uh, samaj mein lo, itne log mujhe pehchan mein lage, itne log mere saath uh, sambandhi ban jaye, all that lokeshna, vitreshna. Vitreshna jab hum rakhte hai man mein, to yodhan ki tada, then I turn away Krishna. Twice he had gone, once he sent a message. I can turn away Krishna from my own self. Because I am not doing 
not ready for it. And Krishna said, okay. Whenever you are ready, I am there. He gives the knowledge only to Arjun. Because Arjun has been called at the end, in the last verse of 15th chapter, Arjun has been called Anagha, the sinless one. Anagha, the sinless one, Krishna says, I will give the highest knowledge in the commonest possible uh, way, in the simplest possible way. And that's what he's doing. Apayashunam, keep a non-malicious tongue. <laughs> so who comes down to, you know, such a simple level? Therefore, our tongue is meant for only three things. Satyam vada, hitam vada, and Satyam vada, hitam vada, and priyam vada. Satya vada, of course, is being the truth. Vada means to speak. And vachanam. Uh, and uh, it's a jab tabi bolo, jab kisi ka us shabun shabdo se hit hota. If they are going to benefit from it, learn something from it, grow out of it, uh, then use your word. Hitam vada, use the word. And priyam vada. Not always do we have to tell the, uh, do we have to hide the harsh truth. Sometimes we have to tell very harsh things if a person is going wrong or doing something very bad. Uh, Krishna has never used harsh words, of course, except for moodha, foolish, stupid, these are the words he has used. But he says priyam vada, say it gently, say it beautifully, say it with love. Who is going to refuse you? Priyam vada. So the speech is meant only for three things. And when uh, when you cannot speak the truth, Satyam Vada, Kitam Vada, not for the welfare of others, not in a gentle manner so that he find, finds it acceptable, Priyam Vada, then do not speak, then only silence is golden. Speak only when it can improve upon the silence, for silence is the best. This is the way Bhagwan has been telling Arjun to discipline not only the mind, not only the sense organs, not only the indriyas, but discipline the tongue. Discipline of indriya and man to bahut uch, badi baat hai, uchi baat hai. Discipline the tongue. Okay, abhay shunam means disciplining the tongue. Not like Daya, bhuteshwa, lolu, dvam, daya. Daya is another word, uh, daya bhuteshu. When do we have... Uh, when do we feel daya, compassion? Literally, it means a deep sense of empathy, even empathy or sympathy for others, compassion. When do we feel it? Only when we have lifted ourselves out of our own petty little preoccupations of mere saath ye kyun hua, mere saath hua aisa nahi hona chahiye. Ye Bhagwan aap ye change kar do. Ye Bhagwan ye aap aisa kar de to kis hota? Try to control not only my situation but also try to control. God. No, my I can't be occupied with that. I will have no room for compassion. Daya. And also I will not have daya if I expect everyone to hold up my the ideals which I hold or which you hold. If Mary Jitne ideals hai to everyone should hold up to that, isn't it? Who ideals kyun nahi hai, wo siddhan kyun nahi hai nahi, sab ke nahi hai. So uh, in one of the commentaries uh, I read that there are three kinds of daya. Even daya is of three kinds. Okay? So I'll take a small diversion and talk about it because otherwise it's a simple word. Compassion. Bhagwan ki daya sabse shudh hoti hai. Bhagwan ki daya karte hai hamare. Daya kab karte hai? Jab wo humko um, prosperity or good circumstances dekhe. Then we say, oh Bhagwan ki daya hai. But remember, Bhagwan also gives us difficult circumstances so that our sins are washed off. Usne paap jo sangrah kiye hoye hai, they are uh, eliminated. Wo bhi hamare hits ke liye hai. All the difficult circumstances and tragedies and uh, uh, situations which are intolerable and hurt. All these are meant for our good that Chris, that Bhagwan is sending us. Why? Because ab hamari shukti ke liye. So hum is tak kehte ye Bhagwan ki kripa hai. Bhagwan ki kripa. Jab wo humko achha samay dete hai, we can say Bhagwan ki daya. But in both circumstances, he remains untouched. What about Sant and Mahatma? Three kinds of daya. So Sant or Mahatma ki daya kaisi hoti hai? Wo hoti hai ki 
वो दुख देखते हैं लोगों का और वो दुख देखते हुए सोचते हैं कि मैं इनका भला कैसे कर सकता हूँ मैं इनका दुख कैसे दूर कर सकता हूँ ये सोचने लगते हैं बट संत एंड महात्मा दे डोंट गेट टच बाय द दुख ऑफ अदर दे डोंट गेट अफेक्टेड बाय तो एक स्टोरी है दैट इंद्र हैड कट ऑफ द हेड ऑफ द ऋषि ऋषि आउट ऑफ नो प्रोवोकेशन एंड द ऋषि ऋषि लेटर ऑन वेन हिज लाइफ हैज बीन रिस्टोर्ड इट्स अ लॉन्ग स्टोरी वेन हिज लाइफ हैज बीन रिस्टोर्ड एट द सेम टाइम इंद्र लेटर नीडेड हिज बोन फॉर हिज सेल्फ प्रोटेक्शन फॉर समिंग And Indra requested him the same that Dadi Rishi. Can you give me your bone? Now you know that Dadi Rishi uh, had had been cut off, but he had no malice, and he said, "Yes, of course, I will give up my life. I can't give my bones without eliminating my life, extinguishing my life." So he relinquished his life and gave his bones to Indra in that story. So there's a lesson in that story that in order to Indra said, "For my protection, I need something." In time, in the time of his need. Once again, that I do my own good do, do not touch. But he is not touched by the dukkha. This Rishi Mahatmao's ka daya, ki daya hoti. What about the daya of the sadhak? I Rishi Mahatma can not be. I can not be to Bhagwan ke level ka ho sakta. Naturally, we haven't reached that level. So, how can we daya get to it? Are we sadhak to ho sakte? Simple speakers. So, sadhak ki daya kaise hoti hai? Ye bhav rehta hai ki kisi ko sochi kaise kar. और किसी का भला कैसे कर सकते हैं और सबका हित हो सब हो सकते रहा समस्त जन कल्याण निरतम करुणामयम ये हमारी प्रेयर होती है हमारी सनातन नॉट ओनली प्रेयर फॉर माई सेल्फ बट समस्त जन कल्याण फॉर दिस एंटायर यूनिवर्स फॉर पीपल ऑफ एवरी रिलीजन एंड कास्ट एंड क्रीड एंड कलर आई प्रे इन दिस इज अ प्रेयर विद इन द धर्म एंड यू नो दैट प्रेयर इज अ कॉमन वन समस्त जन कल्याण निरतम कल्याण करुणामय फॉर ऑल लेकिन ये साधक भी चाहता है कि मैं साधक हूँ इसलिए मुझे इस दया का अभिमान न छुए सी सटल डिफरेंस साधक से आई मैं सीख आई वॉन्ट द हाइस्ट रूट मैं दया भी करूंगा लेकिन ये अभिमान मुझे नहीं छूना चाहिए कि मैं दयावान हूँ दयालु हाँ वट अबाउट द ऑर्डिनरी मनुष्य द कॉमन मैन एंड वी ऑफिन डू दैट द साधारण मनुष्य की भी दया होती है सॉरी नॉट थ्री टाइप्स फोर टाइप्स ऑफ दया साधारण मनुष्य की दया ऐसे होती है कि ही कैरीज दैट प्राइड एंड हिट मैं दयालु हूँ मालूम है मैंने ये किया है वो किया है एंड देन एहसान भी जताता है या जताती है कि मैंने आपके लिए किया है तो तुम मुझसे आप दबो यू हैज टू बी एंडर माई कंट्रोल और सॉर्ट ऑफ and accept my superiority that kind of ehsaan jatana become very ugly and very painful but it happens kyunki hum daya karte hue bhi us daya ki ashuddhi kar dete hain that's what is said daya as compassion becomes ashuddh compassion uska bhala hua ha you got him out of trouble yes lekin wo ashuddhi ho gayi kyunki humne ehsaan jataya i held the pride also arrogance also and sometimes i do daya out of uh, wanting to do a favor chalo uh, you know throwing you a crumb and doing you a favor and sometimes we do daya uh, or help others out of fear ki abhi aisa nahi karenge to iska consequence mujhe kuch aur bhugatna padega all these kinds of daya which we have seen is a shuddha daya So it's not as simple as it looks. Within one sentence, ah, daya karo, it comes back. No, it's not like that. As you can see, even in some, um, you know, how subtle it can be. Daya can also be. And the last word is alu look dwam, non covetous. Why do we covet? Why do we have lalach for things and objects and experiences which other people have? It becomes just natural somehow. Are it? कैन करेक्ट इट बाय अंडरस्टैंडिंग कि हम लालच कर रहे हैं कुछ और देख के अलो लुकवा कवेट नॉट डाई नेबर वाइट नॉर इज काउ नॉन कवेट के लालच से आपको क्या अनुभव होता है मानो इट्स अ वेरी पेनफुल एक्सपीरियंस कि मुझे कोई चीज का अभाव नाउ आई लैक सम जब तक हमने कंपेरिजन नहीं किया 
किया था लालच नहीं किया था वो अभाव आई डिट नॉट फील द लैक ऑफ इट तो आई वॉज संतुष्ट आई वॉज कम्प्लीट आई वॉज फुलफिल्ड एंड आई वॉज होल एंड नाउ आई एम फ्रेगमेंटेड लुप्तवाद जो है ना लालच ग्रेट एंड अभाव विच इज क्रिएटिंग एन एंडलेस थर्ट इन आर सेल्फ इन ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी आर एक्चुअली हार्मिंग ओनली एंड ओनली आर
Hari and therefore it becomes messed up also because Hari and Vesta because it is for some phal. I want this result only that phal ana chahiye and therefore my action becomes Hari and aggressive and loud and restless. Bhagwan says, can you please be pasta phal? Try and do things nicely, quietly, save time. Yes, also when they are running out of time, they have to do them in a great hurry. But that happens only when we have done more time management. I haven't saved enough time for my study, or for my driving to the uh, school, or for my driving to the airport, or for uh, teaching as, uh, some online classes uh, to the students. Therefore, I rush into the class. I rush to the airport. My time management is not there. Get up seven. Uh, get up an hour early, and when you do your time management, you'll find, hey, I don't have to rush into anything. The rush happens when I am scattered. So Bhagwan says, even a non-scattered mind is closer to me. It's quieter. It's restoring its energies for me. And therefore we find that these are some of the qualities Bhagwan says to Arjun. You can cultivate, I am happy with you. Satyam, there's a high premium. I'm going to dwell on Satyam just for one brief moment here. Because in the Mahabharata, <coughs> You know that uh, the Kauravas were ranged against untruth. Untruth meaning, I want that land, I want that property. This is not right to mine. So it is a form of a satya, untruth. But there was a, a person called Yuyutsu. Yuyutsu was a Kaurava. And yet he was one of them who very bravely crossed the floor, walked towards the Pandavas and said, I am going to fight for the Pandavas. I am a Kaurava, but I am fight uh, with the Pandavas. Why? Not because he had great love for them. He had great love for truth. He said, I will stand for truth. And therefore there is this epic ballad which has been dramatized also beautifully on the stage by many artists. It's a, it's a ballad called uh, Andhayu by Dharmvi Bharti. In that Vijutsu says, Mera Apraad says itna tha. Mera Apraad says itna hai ki satya par raha mai drud. Satya par raha mai drud. I will not give up truth. Drona, Bhim, sabke sab maharathi. Dronacharya the teacher, Bhishma the grand sire. Sab maharathi hai, lekin nahi ja sake Duryodhan ke virut. Duryodhan stands for non-truth and the greatest of teachers, Dronacharya Bhishma, nahi ja sake Duryodhan ke virut. Can you imagine? Who fir bhi mein ne kaha, Paksh mein asatya ka nahi lunga. Who is saying this? Yuyutsu who walks towards the Pandavas, being a Kaurava. I will say that I will not be a Satya ka nahi lunga. I am also a Kaurav. I am also a Kaurav. But Satya is a big one. Kaurav Vansh. My Vansh is a Kaurav Vansh. Satya is a big one. So how many of us have the capacity to stand for truth in the most difficult circumstances? When truth is going to hurt, when telling the truth is going to make, to put me on a map where the consequences will have to be born. Maybe I lose my job. Maybe I lose the respect of my relatives. Maybe people will walk out of my life. That's the situation you used to is in. In that situation, how many of us have the capacity to stand by truth? And therefore, this grand epic, uh, the ballad, Andhayuk, beautiful one, was dramatized so many times on stage. And uh, Vijay Kashyap, who is on our panel right now, he has been uh, part of it. So, uh, he will tell you many a story about how it used to be dramatized on the Delhi stage. And how uh, the, the beauty of it was brought out by the great writer Dhanubir Bharti. So, sorry for exceeding the time, but we will carry on uh, with verse number next time where Bhagwan talks about a few more qualities and says I want that tej, the glow, tej akshama, driti, shaucham, adroha in you. Bhagwan is not done yet with Arjun. He wants to demand some more of daily qualities. We'll see that. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purna Mudachade Purna Purna Madaya Purna Neva Vrishyate Shanti Shanti Hari Om Shri Guru Namaha Hari Om
थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू